Okay, we are live. We are live. We are live. We are alive. We are live. Hey, Matt Frost. Hi, Alex. Pedro. Pedro Garcia. Pedro Saxo. I see you there. I see you tuning in, my friend. Sure do miss you and uh, miss your music. But thankfully, you know, Pedro, there was a CD that I... Oops, what did I do there? Oh, must have hit the wrong button. <laughs> Uh, Pedro, there's a CD of yours that uh, I produced many years ago that uh, is amazing and awesome. And, uh, you know, I get to listen to you from time to time, which is very exciting. I'm going to put this logo thing back up here again so you all can check it out. <coughs> and uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in tonight. I think my mom's out there somewhere. Um, hi, Mom. I love you. Hope you're doing well. And uh, I do want to remind you uh, that, that this website that's up there, itastudiostreams.com, uh, if you're interested in donating to local Nashville musicians, uh, you can do that there. 100% of your donations uh, go directly to Nashville musicians. And uh, um, now more than ever, uh, this is kind of an essential thing. Um, I'm going to turn you guys around and uh, so I can see. Well, I won't be able to see you, but you'll be able to see me. You probably wish I had left it turned around. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, probably wondering if I got my hair cut. Of course, the answer is yes. Yes, I did. I cut my own hair. And uh, quarantine quarantine hair, you know. So uh, anyhow, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, there was an announcement made today here in Nashville, and I'm going to read this verbatim. This is from the Nashville Symphony. It said, uh, this is one of the most difficult messages we've ever had to write, but we want you to let you know first before we release this information. Well, maybe they can't do it then. Never mind. <laughs> anyhow, there's some news coming out. And uh, um, so I there's there's things that are changing. Let's just say that. I guess uh, I guess they're not announcing it quite yet. So uh, anyhow, um, I've been in the studio recording some. I've been working on. Actually, I'm going to play you something I've been working on. Uh, I've been playing on, uh, working on rather some some flute etudes, and uh, all these right here. All these flute etudes right here. Um, they're improvisational etudes uh, over standard tunes. And I decided that uh, I was going to start working on these to kind of see what I could come up with. And uh, so I, I hope that uh, I hope they're coming out well. I'm going to try to get 10 of them. I think I've got eight of them done so far. And. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm going to play one of those for you right now so you can check it out. So this is over, uh, there's a Charlie Parker tune called Confirmation. And uh, um, this is a tune that is written over, well, it's improvised over that. Uh, a contrafact is something that, uh, a melody that you write over another tune. And that's not what this is, actually. This is, this is the kind of thing where um, I am playing a solo over it, going back and transcribing it. And uh, making some little changes here to there. But uh, but I'll play this for you. I'm going to play it for you live because I don't get to play much flute on here. So uh, here you go. This one's called, the tune's called Confirmation, but I'm calling it The Answer Is Yes. You follow along.
page two. Usually I do a couple of choruses. Oops, usually I do a couple of choruses. Okay. So, uh, so that's the tune confirmation. And again, I'm just soloing over it, and I wrote out the solo. It usually takes me a few times to get something that I, that I, think, uh, that I think sounds decent. Um, I'm going to bring this mic up a little bit also. Just give me one second, y'all. I have a lot of stuff open on my computer. Okay, that should be a little better with the voice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this mic up, and... Uh, I'm going to play this for you, and I'm going to record it also. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see, because this is kind of fun to do every now and then. So that's that purple is the uh, is what I recorded before. That's what I just played for you. And so this this whole session that I have open has uh, a bunch of the different tunes that I've done. I've done "Someday My Prince Will Come," "Star Eyes," I've done a blues, <coughs> excuse me, "Stella by Starlight," all the things you are. Have you met Miss Jones? But right now, we're going to concentrate on confirmation. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace this. I'm going to make myself a new playlist. And uh, so that I keep that. And uh, that'll allow me to go in and record. I'm going to give myself a little reverb because I can. Right? Check that out. That's pretty good, right? And uh, so I'm going to try to play this um, correctly. And I'm not sure I'll be able to. Um, some of it's a little tricky, but uh, bear with me. It'll be fun. It'll be like being at a live gig, and you'll hear mistakes, and uh, I don't know. Maybe you'll be happy about it. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Hey, if you guys have any questions, also you can put them into the uh, 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 put them into the comments and. Uh, my buddy Alex, who's on the other side, he'll get them to me. All right, here we go. I'm going to finish that, but I'm going to turn it around so you can see me. And uh, you'll see that I really am playing the flute. I'm going to put myself back in over here, give myself a little pre-roll, and then play the rest of the tune. All right? Ouch.
Okay, so that's how it's done. Just reading through. And now what I'm going to do, just to do it, is I'm just going to play through a couple of choruses just to, uh, just to kind of play through it for you. <coughs> Not following the music, just, just improvise for you. And uh, I've been playing a lot of flute. Uh, those of you that wonder, I play a Yamaha flute. Uh, amazing flutes. This is a 900 series. Sorry, 600 series with a 900 series uh, uh, solid silver head joint. They're amazing instruments, and uh, I sure do love it. So, anyways, I'm going to just play a couple of courses through for you. Here we go. So uh, there you go, a little bit of confirmation for you. And so uh, let's see, what else is going on? Well, I've been doing some recording. Let me take this reverb off of here. I like, sound like I'm in a big cave. All right, so I've been uh, doing some recording. I've got a show coming up um, this next week, uh, a program called Music City Roots, and that's going to air on Thursday the 18th. <coughs> And it's with a new group that I'm putting together, have put together here in town, um, consisting of some of Nashville's finest. And uh, um, I've got Emmanuel Etchum on trumpet, a really wonderful young trumpet player who's been here for a number of years, um, came out of Belmont University. And uh, he's been touring with uh, the great Lauren Daigle. Um, if you're not familiar with her, she's an incredible vocalist. So he's been on the road doing that and uh, playing a lot of stuff here in town. Um, got Jordan Pearlson on drums, who's a brilliant drummer. Came from down from New York a few years back. And uh, Jordan and I have done a lot of music together. We did a Christmas record together called Slay What? Uh, with a great bassist here in town named Matt Wigton. And uh, we also went to Tuva together, um, me and Jordan. Uh, Felix Pastorius on bass, our buddy uh, Richard Aspinwall, and uh, my wife uh, Leoko all came to Tuva, which is outside of Mongolia where the throat singers are, and uh, man, what an amazing, amazing trip that was. Um, I should play you guys some music uh, sometime from from that experience. I think we've got some video also that, uh, that I should share with you. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so speaking of some of that stuff, um, again, I've been recording. I've been working um, on a lot of different material. I'm going to play you something else right now from a project that uh, um, was arranged by um, a saxophonist named Ian Cruz. And this tune is called uh, Many More Sunrises. And it was written... 
a number of years ago for a really wonderful, I was in dedication to a really wonderful um, piano player uh, from South Africa named Abdullah Ibrahim. And if you haven't checked out Abdullah Ibrahim, I would, I would highly, highly recommend it. I'm looking for the track over here is what I'm doing. As you can tell, I'm very together. <laughs> what did I say? Many more sunrises. Oh, that's not the right one. I have two of them. This is the right one. And so uh, Ian did a really nice arrangement of it uh, for five saxophones and rhythm section. And so uh, I enlisted the friends, uh, uh, some friends of mine. I got Dave Pietro uh, out of New York City uh, on alto saxophone. Dave plays with Maria Schneider's big band at Darcy James Argue and is the head of the jazz studies program at, at NYU. He's a, a wonderful player and, and a very, very dear friend of mine that I've known for many, 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 many years since I was 16 years old. So I've got him playing lead alto, <coughs> got him playing a solo on it. I've got uh, Alex Graham on second alto who lives here in Nashville, teaches uh, saxophone at Belmont University, another brilliant, beautiful player. And uh, um, I've got um, Mark Douthit playing second tenor. I'm playing lead tenor. Mark's on second. And uh, Mark has been here since uh, late 80s, maybe. And uh, he's, he's like the top call uh, saxophone guy here in town. And a uh, brilliant, brilliant musician. He's a great friend. And uh, um, uh, we just did a session uh, a few days ago, uh, actually, for an upcoming, upcoming uh, Willie Nelson record. And uh, didn't get to see him because we were all in separate rooms, but we were playing together, which was awesome. And uh, I got Ryan Mitta, <coughs> excuse me, on baritone sax. Ryan is um, my second boss next to Dave Matthews uh, because I teach at Vanderbilt University, and Ryan is the head of jazz studies at Vanderbilt University. So, uh, so that's awesome. And I've got Jonathan Wires on bass. Jonathan is a great, uh, incredible bass player here in town. He's a prolific writer also, and uh, he's, he's really something else. Um, and then I've got um, uh, Jordan. Um, is this Jordan on this one? Hmm. I think this is Jordan playing drums. <laughs> I really should write this down. I'm going to do it right now so I don't forget. Okay, it's done. So this is Jordan on drums. So this is a tune called Many More Sunrises. And uh, this is dedicated to the um, brilliant South African pianist, Abdullah Ibrahim. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, here you go. One, two. So one, two, three, ready, go. <laughs> I see you there, Caleb Chapman, Doug Cormier, and hey, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, Charlie King, I see you on there too. Charlie King, Charlie King. Everybody be quiet as a tennis solo. Be very quiet. What's up, Caleb? Yeah, I were king of the forest.
Pietro on alto. Best mangoes. Hey, Todd St. Germain and your daughters. Don't stop now, Dave. Take one more. baby. Dressed up for everybody tonight. I'm not saying the shirt's clean, I'm just saying I dressed up. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, go on, buddy. Huh. Yeah. 
that's an arrangement by Ian Cruz of my tune called Many More Sunrises. And I just finished that actually this last week. Um, the bass player, Jonathan Wires, um, laid a really lovely bass part on it. And uh, he's awesome. I love him dearly. He's a great, great friend. And so that tune is now finished, which makes me feel very good. And uh, I've been working on some videos. I'm going to play you guys a, a video uh, later on as well um, as we're calling it an evening. But that's still a few minutes away. And uh, did a piccolo uh, solo this week on a friend's record. That's going to be awesome. He wrote this incredibly hard tune. And... Uh, he sounds incredible on it. He's playing alto saxophone. So I'm looking forward to uh, that coming out. Um, I'm going to get to a couple of questions here. <coughs> There's a couple of them. Um, this is a difficult one. It says, hello from Connecticut. How's it going, Jeff? Okay. It's going very well, Connecticut. Thank you very much. How are you? <laughs> Everything is good, actually. Um, you know, there's a lot of turmoil in the world, and uh, there's a lot of turmoil uh, here in Nashville and uh, different places. Um, um, it's hard to kind of know exactly what to do, to be quite honest with you. Um, there's a lot of heartbreak. Uh, there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of uh, pent-up frustration, um, not only for recently, but for the last 400 years. And so, uh, um, you know, I, th I think people are upset. Obviously, people are very upset. So, you know, trying to trying to get through, trying to make music and trying to stay positive and uh, uh, trying to stay inspired, uh, but also trying to stay conscious of what's going on and what my role in this is and uh, uh, that we are all in this together. And the only way we're going to get through it is together. And uh, so, yeah, trying to have a lot of dialogue uh, with friends and family. Um, social media is tough sometimes, as we all know. I would much rather have an in-person dialogue, but that's a little tough to do these days also. Um, but everything in general is good. I've been teaching a bunch of lessons. Um, I started offering lesson packages a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's been going very well. It's been a lot of fun. I've got some really great students, and uh, and they're learning a lot. Uh, they seem to be learning a lot. anyway. <laughs> they're sounding better every week. So we're having a good time. Uh, we're laughing a lot and uh, usually going much too long on the lessons, but... Uh, but we're having a good time doing it, so it's nice to uh, um, nice to see everybody there. Um, somebody else said, "Love the shirt, so classy." Oh yeah, that's me, Mr. Classy. <laughs> Is this comfy as your T-shirts? Um, well, yeah, I guess kind of. It's different. It's it's linen. I really like linen, except for linen wrinkles. You know, you can look at it and it'll wrinkle, and uh, just from the the sheer force of your eye power, and uh, but linen is awesome, especially in the summertime, and uh, I highly recommend it. It's got some really great linen pants in the mail, and uh, I ordered them oh, about three months ago. <laughs> I don't know where they came from. I don't know if they had to go out and like, like. I don't, how do you make this? Is, what is linen made out of? I have no idea. And uh, so I don't know if you have to shear a sheep to get linen or what you have to do. But whatever it was, I think they started from the beginning before they made those pants. And... Uh, um, okay, what song could you perform a million times and never get tired of? I'm going to have to say none. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know that I could ever perform a tune a million times and never get tired of it. Um, but, but in all seriousness, you know, a, a, as a road musician, as a musician who plays with a man, this is, um, uh, I've been with Dave Matthews Band now for 12 years. I was with Bela Fleck for 14. Um, you know, I've played some of my own tunes hundreds of times, but you know, some of these tunes you have to play night after night, and you have to, you have to reinvent night after night, and so uh, um, I, I think it has a lot to do with intention, and sort of the position that you put yourself in up here. You know, when when you're working um, uh, to play a piece of music for the the hundred and whatever th time thousandth time of whatever um 
it's all just in the attitude. You know, if you if you are approaching it um, in a new way, it's going to feel new. If you're listening, I mean, look, here's the thing. Like, you can have a conversation with somebody um, about a, a particular subject. And let's say that you have that, like you're talking about that same subject a lot. Well, if 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 you're listening, if you're open to going down different pathways, then that conversation can go a lot of different places. And music's the same way. Um, so so in all seriousness, to the answer to your question, I could play any tune a million times and not get tired of it, uh, as long as I approach it the right way. And I think any situation is like that. So. Um, any relationship is like that. Try to be open. Try to listen. Um, stuff I'm still working on. <laughs> uh, do you ever write any musician for any music for other musicians? Um, yes. I mean, all my music is written for other musicians. Um, I don't really write any. Well, I've written a couple of solo pieces, um, but I like to share them with other people. So I would say that all the music that I write is for other people. Um, I get to be included on it, um, but I do write it for other people. I want to hear other musicians play it, and uh, that's a very exciting uh, thing for me. Um, okay, from Tyler Mir, let me read this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Um, are you ever coming to the Jazz District in Kansas City, Missouri? Um, yes, I have been through the Jazz District in Kansas City, Missouri. It's awesome, and I hope to get back there soon. And... Uh, um, so that'll happen. I know it. I know it. Um, Tyler, <laughs> Tyler, okay, I'm coming back to Tyler's question. Tyler is a great, great friend of mine. Um, one of his records uh, is on my label, Ear Up Records. You can go to earuprecords.com and uh, check out a whole vast array of, of stuff. His question is, who's the best trumpet player you've ever played with, and why is it Tyler Muir? Well, I think we all know the answer to that question, Tyler. I think it's your humility, um, your ability to... Um, uh, empathize with other musicians and put them ahead of yourself. <laughs> Tyler is uh, in D.C. Uh, with his wife, Kelsey, and uh, they're amazing. They're expecting their first child. Congratulations to you both on that, to all three of you. And uh, uh, But Tyler does uh, video games also. He's invented some video games, and uh, he does a bunch of music on them. <coughs> and... Uh, um, one of these days, he's probably ac actually going to hire me to play on one of them. Isn't that right, Tyler? That's my question to you. <laughs> when am I going to get to play on one of your video games? Um, but uh, but if you get a chance, go to EarUpRecords.com and check out the Tyler Muir Big Band. And uh, it's a fantastic writer, brilliant, brilliant tunes. Uh, he's an incredible, incredible trumpet player. And uh, um, one of my very, very dear friends. So uh, thanks for tuning in, Tyler. And checking it out tonight. Uh, any new collabs with the amazing Keith Carlock? The amazing Keith Carlock, incredible drummer, uh, uh, plays with Steely Dan, played with Sting and John Mayer, uh, came out of North Texas. He was there a little after I was. Yes, as a matter of fact. Um, we were supposed to be doing some stuff this spring with Near Felder and uh, Felix Pastorius, uh, but obviously everything is on hold. But Band of Other Brothers, is um, uh, there's talk of trying to do some stuff online. And that's uh, Keith Carlock, uh, my partner in crime, Jeff Babco, Near Felder, and the great and amazing Will Lee on the bass. Uh, if you ever saw the David Letterman show, you saw Will Lee and heard him playing bass for, I don't know, three or 400 years on that show. And uh, so, yes, there will be some collaborations coming along with Keith Carlock, which I'm very excited about. I love Keith. Uh, he lives uh, in Nashville in the area, and uh, um, he's amazing. He's amazing. Um, a few more here. Uh, let's see. I uh, love what you do with the MB. Thank you very much. Be interested in hearing your analysis of the technical and stylistic differences you have with Leroy on the songs he originated. Um, sure, uh, I can I can speak a little bit about that. Um, I mean, we're very different players. We our our influences overlap. The people that we listen to. Um, but it's like when you have two painters painting the same scene, they're going to see it in a little different way. Or two storytellers telling a similar story. They're going to have different ways of approaching it. And, uh, um, you know, and, and Leroy's approach was, was he, had, he has a much gentler approach on the instrument than I do. And uh, um, 
and that has certainly influenced me. And I, I know that when we would play together, um, you know, the way that I would play would kind of nudge him also. And that's the beautiful thing about um, about working with other musicians, especially other musicians who play your instrument, who have uh, a very distinct style. And uh, um, I love Roy's playing. I think it's beautiful. Um, sounded just like himself, which is the goal, you know. And uh, um, I remember we had him up uh, with the Flectones one time, he came up and played a tune called Zona Mona, and he crushed it. <laughs> it was so beautiful, and uh, and I gotta find, I gotta get a copy of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself a note. I'm gonna talk to uh, Baylor's tour manager Richard, and see if we can't find a copy of that because that's in the archives somewhere. I would love to hear that, and I know that it was it was on one of the gigs that we opened up for. If any of you know what what gig that was, you know maybe send me a send me a note, send me a note in the comments. Um, but, uh, you know, there's stuff that I play every night, uh, with Dave Matthews that, of course, you know, some of Roy's parts, but even in the solos, there's certain phrases that I'll play that, um, are coming directly out of him and, uh, and I know it. And so I, th when I'm playing it, I'm thinking of him, I'm paying homage and, uh, um, you know, kind of, you know, I th we all feel that way, I think. But for me as the saxophone player who who came in, again, not to replace him. You can't replace somebody. Um, but I came into his position in the band. Um, you know, ev every night there's homage being paid, and I have a photograph of him and I together underneath my glass panel, plexiglass panel, that's uh, that's on my rack there. So, uh, so I see him every night also. He's with us up there on stage all the time, all the time. Um, Mike Middaw is one. I hope that answers your question, by the way. Thank you. That's a great question. I know that, that somebody had asked that before. It might have been you. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't gotten it, gotten to it until now, but thank you for asking again. Um, Mike Middaw is asking, hey, Jeff, are you able to give whistling lessons? Asking for a friend. Um, no. <laughs> I do know a great jazz whistler, though, a guy named uh, by the name of Brad Terry who lives up in up in Maine. And uh, um, he's unbelievable. He's absolutely—he's an incredible clarinetist. I played some stuff, uh, some duo stuff. Uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago that I had found of him and I playing together from the early '90s at the Maine Jazz Camp. And uh, Brad is a tremendous whistler, also. Okay, question from Argentina. Hi, Argentina. Thanks for tuning in. Is uh, there a specific DMB song that's the hardest or more demanding for you to play? Thanks for sharing your time and art with us. Stay safe. Uh, well, thank you for that. Um, <coughs> the, I think the hardest song, well, I think Last Stop was, was one of the hardest to learn. Um, just because of all the, the twists and turns in it. But what a great tune. Um, um, w we did a, 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 a Tom Petty cover. Um, Oh God! What's the name of it? Oh, I I can't remember the name of it. Um, somebody probably does, and they can they can tell me what it is. But <laughs> that tune about killed me when uh, when we were playing it, and uh, um, so I'm on the low berry part, so I'm I'm honking out a ton of air, and it's constant all the way through the tune, and. Uh, um, I remember we played it one night, and I, I think maybe there was maybe Tim had a solo at the end, and uh, um, I think I just had to like keep playing it. And we got done with the tune. I remember, and I was beat, man. I was I was just ready to drop. I remember Dave kind of looks over, and, and you all know that look, that that mischievous look that he has, and uh, he just kind of looked at me, and that the eyebrows went up. He's like ah. <laughs> And uh, I think he was he was very happy to see me over there struggling. <laughs> um, uh, but but thank you for that question. So yeah, those two I, I would say probably last stop and, and uh, uh, oh god ru uh, running some something running anyhow Tom Petty tune. Um, another question was uh, was there a saxophonist that first drew you to picking up uh, the saxophone yourself? Uh, no, actually, there wasn't. Um, it wasn't like I heard the instrument and went, wow, man, I have to play this. Okay. Um, 
I wanted to play the drums. And I'm sure uh, my mom is is watching. I'm pretty sure. Hi, mom. And uh, I'm sure that, that when we all went in and talked to the director, she and my dad were probably like, fix me on the um dre. And so uh, my director said, well, you know, we've got a bunch of drummers. How about the saxophone? And uh, my director's name was Arthur Legassi, uh, my first director. And uh, I was like, uh, okay, sure. So I, I think uh, I think in a lot of ways the the saxophone ended up picking me, uh, but I was heavily into vocalists. Always have been, um, soul vocalists, black vocalists, um, uh, black American music, and uh, blues and <coughs> R and B, funk, pop tunes, um, and so uh, I started playing melodies on it. So, one, so I heard about Boots Randolph. I heard about Tom Scott. Um, my folks had some some jazz records, some Dave Brubeck, some Duke Ellington, um, um, an Eddie Harris record called Exodus. Uh, I don't know where they got that from. I'm going to have to ask my mom one day. Um, but that was actually the very first tune that I ever picked up uh, by ear was Eddie Harris's Exodus. Boop, boop. I bet I can play it still. Because I think maybe it was it was a popular tune. It was a movie. Um. <laughs> cool kind of kind of old school um, Eddie Harris but I, and I used to play along with that and I remember I would play along with part of the solo too and then I think that there was somewhere in there where he hit like a high G or a high A or something some note that was in the altissimo range which is which is off the horn and I had no idea what to do so I would just go back to the beginning of the song <laughs> play that again <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, do you have a favorite artist? Uh, thank you for that. Um, uh, for that question, I appreciate it. Do you have a favorite artist you've collaborated with? Man, I you know, I gotta tell you, like the musicians I get to play with, man, they are my favorite artists to collaborate with. Uh, I mean, I know what you're asking, but but I have to say that uh, you know the members of the Flectones, the members of Dave Matthews Band. The musicians I get to, to work with here in Nashville and outside of Nashville, they are my favorite musicians to play with, um, hands down. You know, I am so lucky, and uh, uh, collaboration is one of my favorite things. Um, and so I, 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 I again, I, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. But as far as 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 collaborating with artists, um, man, Charles Lloyd for me. I'm a big Charles Lloyd fan, saxophonist. Charles is 80-something years old now. And he sat in with us, uh, maybe he's 81 this year. He sat in with us a few years ago at Shoreline. And, uh, man, it was so powerful. It was so powerful. And we hung during the day. He's from Memphis and, like, grew up, um, you know, playing with Phineas Newborn Jr., the piano player. And uh, <laughs> he told me this funny story. He said, uh, he said Elvis dug jazz, and Elvis would come out and hear them play. <clears throat> he said Elvis dug jazz. He says, but he said what he really came for. Um, Phineas's brother Calvin was playing bass in the band, and uh, um, so Elvis would come to to check out um, Calvin because Calvin had all the moves. You know, he was playing stand up bass, but he was rocking like his hips were rocking. He was he would dance while he played, and he said Elvis would come out and like watch him and watch the way that people reacted to him 
He said Elvis stole all his stuff from Calvin Newborn, and uh, which is a really great story. So Calvin Newborn was a bassist in Memphis, brother of Phineas Newborn, finest they called him, and uh, Phineas Newborn Jr. Um, that was that was a moment for me, for sure, a very very powerful moment um, for me as a saxophonist and uh, as as a disciple of of Charles's music. He's a very very deep uh, and powerful musician. Uh, and there have been many others along the way. And, and as far as, as other musicians to work with, I'd really like to do more with Brian Blade. I've done a couple little things with him. I love Brian's playing. Um, Christian McBride. I'd love to do some some more free jazz also. Um, just really open playing. Um, I had a chance to, to um, um, make music with Ornette Coleman one time at his loft with Future Man. And one time just Ornette and myself. And uh, those were some extraordinarily profound moments for me also. Um, I am a huge, 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 cannot be overstated, huge Ornette Coleman fan. And uh, my wife was there, which made it even more special. And uh, both times I was there, the first two times I was there, I was there for six hours at a time. And the third time I went, I was there for about two and a half hours with Scott Robinson, a great uh, multi-instrumentalist out of New York City. And... Uh, it was incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, okay, uh, let's see. I'd love to learn to play. Not sure I can, though. I'd be interested in sponsoring a, or partially sponsoring a local kid for lessons if that's possible. Yeah, Craig, that's that's a very generous offer. Um, there's definitely um, um, opportunity for that. So you can um, get in touch with, with my assistant, Brian, brian at jeffcoffin.com. And uh, he can help you out with all that. So uh, thank you. That's a very, very generous offer. I know we've had a couple people uh, wanting to sponsor um, students to uh, to take some lessons with me. So thank you very, very much. Uh, is Dave ever going to cover a Sting song? I don't know. I don't know. Is Sting ever going to cover a Dave Matthews tune? How's that for a question? <laughs> I've been checking out uh, um, Dream of the Blue Turtles. I, oh, and, you know, I've been listening to that record since... The mid eighties, what eighty six when it came out, something like that. So whenever I clean my garage, I have that down there in a little player, and I always listen to it. What a brilliant, brilliant record that is! And uh, that was when I first really got into Branford Marcellus's playing, and, and Branford's become a very dear friend, and um, just love him, just love him. Um, have you ever heard of Bardcore? Nope, I don't know what that is. Bardcore, never heard of it. Uh, have you heard of this amazing artist by the name of Deemzu? Deemzu, nope. But it's an interesting name. Um, hey, Jeff, you're one phenomenal musician. Thank you. I was wondering maybe you give a listen to Float Like a Buffalo tomorrow at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Amazing grassroots band in Denver. You'll love the brass section. Oh, that sounds cool. Maybe maybe send me a link on uh, Facebook. And uh, if I'm around tomorrow um, at 6 o'clock, uh, 5 o'clock Nashville, I'll try to tune in. Um, what musician has been the most intimidating to play with? Wow, I don't think I've ever been asked that question. That's a really good question. Um, most intimidating to play with. Man, I don't know. I've been stumped. I've been stumped. I'm going to think about that. Alex, let's leave that question up and maybe, uh, maybe I'll give that some thought this week and, uh, Try to put out an answer for you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, is there an instrument that you don't play that you've always wanted to learn? Um, man, I'd love to be able to play the accordion. I would love that. That's such a, uh, you know, especially done in the way that I like hearing it. <clears throat> not not playing polkas and that kind of thing. I mean, that's cool, but um, kind of that Eastern European kind of vibe. And I really wish I played better piano. Um, I composed some on piano, but I really wish that I could really play piano. Um, you have the whole symphony at your fingertips. And uh, um, so, uh, you know, that's that's something that uh, I would really like to put more time in. Um, but I want to learn some more arranging stuff also when I'm home. I, I, have, a, I have a lot of plans for the next year that, that, uh, that we're off. And uh, um, so... Yeah, a lot of stuff. So I'm going to play for you. I'm going to play 
another tune for you. And uh, I'm just going to play a little snippet of it. And then I'm going to play this video for you and say goodnight through that. But this is a tune. This is uh, part of a tune that we recorded the other day. Um, the name of this group, I was telling you earlier, I'm putting a new group together in town. We're going to debut the group on Music City Roots on the 18th of June. And uh, it's Jordan Pearlson on drums, uh, David Rogers on keys, uh, Jay White on bass, and Emmanuel Etchum on trumpet. And the name of the group is Jeff Coffin and the New Gurus. And uh, that's kind of how I think of these cats. Um, they're young players here in town. Um, they're not like 15 or 16 or anything, but they're, you know, they're established musicians, but, but they're the young cats coming up. They're the new gurus. And uh, so I'm, I'm very happy to be checking out some music with them. And so this is a tune I wrote very recently. And uh, I don't know if my soprano reader will let me play or not, maybe. But it came out of this line. I can't believe I just played that right. But that was the line that I wrote, and I was like, that's a cool line for a tune. It's going to go somewhere. So this is what we do. I'm going to give you a little snippet of this, and uh, I hope that you'll tune in next Thursday, <coughs> um, uh, June 18th, to Music City Roots here in Nashville. And you get to see all these videos, and you get to hear all this music. I'm going to play a little snippy of this. Here you go. Uh-huh. Hey, Claire Daly, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to look. Guess about the serial number on this baritone. One zero nine one zero nine six six one zero nine six six ten thousand nine hundred and sixty six clicks. Okay, so that that's gonna that's a fun tune, and it goes some crazy places. And uh, all right, so it's about time to say goodnight here. It's uh, it's it's five till eight, and uh, I really appreciate y'all sticking with me, hanging out, and uh, um, can't tell you how much I appreciate you you checking out these live streams. It means a lot to me. And again, just as a reminder. Um, uh, itastudiostreams.com. You can donate there. 100% of the music goes to local Nashville musicians. Uh, we're going to start. <coughs> we're going to start back up with the live studio streams here within a couple of weeks, and uh, um, we'll have musicians up here in the studio. And uh, um, I will be able to pay them from that uh, from those donations, like a real gig. And uh, they'll also be able to take tips. And, uh, you know, everybody's out of work. There's no work. So there's no work. So a um, few studio sessions going on here to there, but nothing to speak of. So this will be a good opportunity to finally start getting people back to back to work. And we'll be able to talk to them about what they've been doing and uh, get them up here. You know, keep everybody socially distanced, of course. And um, um, But I hope everybody's staying safe out there, uh, you know, and, and uh, unmasking uh, when I go out. And uh, I'm doing it as much for everybody else 
everybody else's mom and dad and grandparents and people who are immune compromised, uh, as I am for myself and, and my family. So um, agree with it or not, doesn't matter to me. I'm wearing a mask. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go out with, with this video. I'll turn this around here. And uh, this is something that I put together last night. I got a bunch of archival footage. And this is a tune that I recorded um, uh, recently with um, uh, Ben Jaffe from Preservation Hall Jazz Band. He's the, the tuba player in Preservation Hall. And uh, my great friend Doug Belote on drums, who uh, is also out of New Orleans. And uh, he's playing snare drum on this. And uh, the great Roy Agee here in town, brilliant, brilliant uh, trombonist. And uh, I've known Roy for, for many, many years. I knew Roy when he was still in college uh, at Vanderbilt. He, uh, he also plays with Lauren Daigle with uh, my friend Evan Cobb on sax and uh, Emmanuel Etchum uh, from the New Gurus. I like saying that. <laughs> and uh, so I think that uh, uh, this, is, this is a pretty relevant thing to check out, and I hope you enjoy it. This is uh, A Closer Walk with V, and uh, the video is all um, um, public domain. That's the word I'm looking for. Let me get you a little bit better view here. It's all public domain, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. And I want to say thank you very much. And uh, I hope you'll come back next week. I'm going to have uh, great trumpet player Rod Magaha uh, with me, probably be on, be on Instagram. And, uh, but uh, check this out, and we will let you know about Thursday the 18th on Music City Roots as well. Thanks, y'all. ITAstudiostreams.com. Peace.
David Rogers. Yeah.